Cool. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining the Health Super Careers Fair today. My name is Taylor. I am uh, from Prost School, and I will be hosting today's Allied Health Focus Session. Firstly, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I'd also like to pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. For today's so, uh, focus session, I'd like to welcome our four panelists. Um, so firstly, we've got Samantha from Connect. We've got Sarah um, and Louise from APM. Uh, and then we've also got Jean from Vital Health. Welcome all. Um, to kick things off, I will go around the virtual room per se and do a few quick introductions. Um, so I might hand the mic to Sam first, if you want to introduce yourself and um, sure. your role. Sure. Um, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining this afternoon. My name's Samantha Bruce. I'm the General Manager for Connect Work Care. Uh, Connect are a uh, large rehab provider and we work across Australia to help Australians to be safe and to be well at work. So uh, we, we spend our days making a difference in people's lives and employ allied health professionals from every discipline you can think of um, to, to do that. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Sarah, how about you? Um, well, I think Sam's kind of covered um, where we, what we do in terms of um, Connect Workers. So I'm also from the Connect um, business um, and I am one of our area managers who, looks, who works in Queensland and northern New South Wales. Um, so I'm an exercise physiologist by background and am based in Townsville. Interesting. Thank you, Sarah. Jen, yeah. over to you. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Jen. I am a clinical manager at Vital Health. Um, we're an organisation that is um, an allied health multidisciplinary team. We service rural and remote um, areas. And yeah, again, kind of same as Connect, have almost every discipline under the sun. Um, that we have as in our multidisciplinary team. Marvellous. Thanks, Jen. And last but certainly not least, Louise, over to you. Thanks, Taylor. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the afternoon. My name is Louise Cadby. I'm the New South Wales State Manager for APM Workcare. Um, we are one of the businesses under the APM umbrella with Connect Workcare. Um, and we're really excited to be involved today. Um, APM WorkCare is an occupational rehabilitation provider. We work across several different schemes um, nationally and we employ lots of different allied health professionals in different disciplines. And we're excited to open our program in the um, coming month for some new grads. We're excited to be here today. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Thanks, Louise. Appreciate that. Cool. Again, welcome everyone to the Allied Health Focus Session. Um, I've prepared a few questions for our panellists today, but it's also worth noting that if any of you students have any questions, feel free to utilise the chat feature or the Q&A feature as well, and we will look to answer some of those throughout or dedicate a bit of time towards the end of the session for some Q&As. So to kick things off, my first question, which I might ask Jen, um, what is the most important uh, and piece of advice uh, you'd give to students aspiring to work for an organization within the sector? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, I think it's really important to, you know, learn as much as you can, um, try different things when you're studying, um, have a look at sort of where your interests lie, really try and connect your interests with what you, um, you know, with your placements and what you're studying, that kind of thing. And, and also know that it's okay to sort of make a mistake um, and just make sure that you've got a really good kind of foundation to be able to reflect on that so you can always learn and grow. Awesome, love that. How about you, Samantha? How about you from your perspective? Uh, I think it's really important to keep in mind all the time that we're really privileged as allied health professionals to be able to work with people to really make a, a true difference in their lives. And I, um, I think it's a, a privileged profession when you get to, I guess, really get involved with your clients and understand their needs and how you can help them and really transform some of the things that are 
um, not necessarily going as well as possible for them. And I think uh, it's great as an allied health professional uh, to, to remember that that's a lucky place um, to be in from a professional perspective. And I think much easier than those engineering students who, you know, go and build bridges and buildings, but I don't know how they get their meaning. So uh, always keep in mind how, how lucky we are to have that as our core purpose. Nice. Who needs buildings and bridges, right? Um, awesome. Exactly. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> How about you, Louise? Um, what's your sort of most important piece of advice you'd give to students aspiring to work for an organisation in the seat there? Yeah, that's um, it's a tricky one, Taylor. There's lots of things, but I think probably the most important um, piece of advice would be certainly in that first year or two is just absolutely be a sponge. I think um, a lot of people who are studying allied health are really not aware um, of occupational rehab and its breadth and I think it's a really good platform as a new grad to be able to really um, learn a really wide range of skills really quickly but it does absolutely take you um, a good length of time to do that but I think that's what keeps the industry also really exciting and challenging it's certainly not a job that you get bored in after two years um, I've worked in rehab ne now for nearly 20 years and I'm still not bored with it. I still think it's absolutely one of the most valuable professions around. So I think I think you really have to come in and recognise its value and be open to that, but also recognise that it's a really challenging role and something that you really, um, it's really going to make your brain hurt some days, but there's so much value and reward in it at the same time. So I think being open to that is really important. Fantastic advice, Louise. Thank you for that. Um, now, I might ask Sarah the next question in terms of what is your organisation looking for in an application uh, and what do students need to show to, uh, to progress the next round? Yeah, I think um, it goes a lot into some of the, the answers from the panellists uh, like just now around um, being willing to learn, um, being really coachable in the space, showing um, uh, that they care for people and wanting to um, make a difference in people's lives and being able to help them reach their goals, whether it be in a return to work space or, you know, just returning to, to a new life for them as well and um, really being able to um, help guide them in those because it, it is a really difficult part of people's lives um, and sometimes significantly changing. So, you, you know, we're a very integral part of that. And I think being able to um, help people in that um, and being able to show that they, they have that interest um, in being able to help them, I guess, um, is some of the things that we look, we look for as well. Cool. Thanks, Sarah. And from the vital health perspective, Jen, um, what do you? What is your organisation looking for in an application, and what do students need to show to progress to, through to that next round? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we certainly look for applicants who share kind of the same um, goal and sort of passion as we do. So um, our vision is to provide rural services to people and communities who would otherwise have limited access to services. So. We do, we're a remote location, we service rural areas, small communities, and we're really looking for people who have that similar drive to kind of help people. So I think if, you know, when you're applying for a um, job, really actually think about what that organisation stands for. Do you share similar vision, goals, um, and really connect with the organisation when you're applying for the for their job in particular. Um, so yeah, for us, it's that genuine kind of, you know, a similar sort of thing, but that genuine um, looking to see if you're, um, you know, in it to help people. And also just for us as well, we also look at kind of, we don't just look at marks. We also look at, um, you know, a well-rounded person. So what are your extracurricular activities? Are you kind of to get a little bit outside your comfort zone and give things a go. Um, again, being in a rural location, those things are quite important to us. Um, your personality and the person as a whole, not just if you've got, you know, top marks. Again, great advice, Jen. Thank you for that. Um, cool. I might ask Sam this next question. So for students who do land a, a job with you, what advice would you get, uh, give them to survive and thrive in that first year? And what should they potentially avoid doing? Uh, I think the 
primary piece of advice that I would give is to be kind to yourself. Uh, working in a work care is actually really complex and tricky. We deal with people, as most allied health professionals in most workplaces do, obviously, but we do so in a really holistic way. So it's, it's not a set number of treatment sessions or a set kind of program that people will follow. You need to take every person on their merits and make a plan and program that suits all of the myriad things that might go on in their lives. So you have to, you have to learn that craft. And I think um, often we have students come in as graduates and think, I don't know everything in three months uh, and therefore I can't be very good at this and therefore this is not the industry for me. I'm going to go to something simpler. And it's often um, something that feels like, the, you know, it's a bit of a rinse and, a, and repeat thing. So my, my real advice is, is just take it really gently, be very, very kind to yourself uh, and recognise that we absolutely do not expect you to know everything in the first three, six or even 12 months that you're with us. And, yeah, as Louise said, she's worked in the industry for nearly two decades. I've worked um, in the industry for 27 years. If I'd known everything in the first six months, I don't think I would have hung around for the other 26 and six months that came after that. So uh, I'm really proud to be able to say that you have to, to learn the skills and the craft in these roles um, slowly and gently, and that's okay. Nice. Thanks, Sam. Uh, I'm seeing a bunch of good questions coming through, but before I go to those, I might ask Louise the same question in terms of, Students who do land a job, um, especially APM uh, work here, what advice would you give them to survive and thrive in that first year and what should they avoid doing? Um, I think echoing what Samantha said, but I think um, really to take every opportunity that comes your way. I think there's so much diversity in this job that we do and I think if you pigeonhole yourself too early, you're not going to have the opportunity to learn new things. So I think um, when I reflect on myself as a new grad, so much of the time I had no idea what I was doing or thought I didn't know what I was doing, but I threw myself into it anyway um, and just absolutely tried to learn as much as I could. And I think having that level of initiative and confidence um, as a new grad I think will stand you apart. I think echoing what Jen said, it's not all about the marks that you get at uni. I think we definitely look for some street smarts and we look for somebody who has that drive and ambition to um, succeed and to mm -hmm. enable better lives within the community and I think you really need to have that initiative that confidence um, a hunger for learning um, but also yeah just just jumping in and and swimming like mad I think it's probably the best piece of advice and then as Sam mentioned but but don't be too hard on yourself as well I think because it, it's definitely a challenging role. Nice it's always, it's always good to look after yourself. Um, Cool. And I think this was a follow-up question um, to your answer before, Jean, regarding about your personality. Um, shout out to anonymous attendee for posting this question, but what sort of uh, personality would you be looking for um, if you could be a little bit more specific around that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess probably similar um, to what's just been mentioned as well. So I think someone who is uh, friendly, keen to give things a go, um, takes initiative, has a little bit of sort of um, outgoing um, where you are happy to sort of immerse yourself into a new like rural environment and, you know, go to the camel races and, you know, go to the goat races and, and feel sort of comfortable to um, be uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> get uncomfortable in, in that perspective yeah awesome i love that um cool and in turn i got, got an interesting question that came through um from another an anonymous attendee um any recommendations for public health or health promotion students um samantha you're quite experienced in this area i might ask you this this question yeah so i guess um from a public health perspective, uh, the types of organisations that we are talking about would utilise those services, maybe not in the delivery of, of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in a client-facing sense. But I would say that um, from a public health perspective, probably the, the growing area is the NDIA space and um, roles from a, a, a senior or coordinating perspective in that environment. Um, and then obviously in a hospital hospital kind of environment as well. So policy um, focused uh, 
largely. So the types of corporate organisations that I think we're all probably from, and Jen, you can correct me um, if I'm wrong on vital health, but they're not the types of roles specifically that we're talking about today, but they definitely do have a space to play in, in potentially some of the um, exec team around uh, our business, particularly the APM family of, of companies. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Um, now, I did see a few come through regarding international um, or opportunities for international graduates. Sarah, I might hand this one to you. Is he, uh, what sort of opportunities are available for these international students? Um, yeah, so I think for our international students, um, so long, uh, there's, there's absolutely the same opportunity um, that we would have if they were domestic students as well. Um, obviously, they have um, their requirements in terms of visas and, and their working visas and the like, but um, it, provided that they are a qualification that does work within um, the op rehab space, um, so you're looking like at OTs and, um, you know, psychologists and rehab counsellors, um, you would also have EPs. I know Sam, we have, have actually been working with having an international, having international students, I'm not students, sorry, international employees come over um, yeah. as well. So provided that they are able to be registered with the, um, with their professional bodies, um, which obviously means their qualifications are recognised in Australia, their opportunity would be very similar to domestic students. Yeah, I, I, mean, I yeah. guess I just... I'd echo um, Sarah's sentiments in that space. And, and basically, we are um, actively recruiting international uh, candidates at the moment. And yeah, as long as you can be ARPA registered or registered with ESSA or ASOC, um, you know, one of those organisations, then you're eligible to work for us in this space. Uh, and we can assist with, you know, visa. We're the same as well. I'm not sure um, where Sam's gone, but, <laughs> but go we're, for a team. <laughs> yeah. we're the same too. So we also recruit um, international candidates and have the ability to do visas as well. Yeah. I think most workplaces probably um, welcome applications like that. Yeah, I think it's changed a little bit at the moment as well. So allied health professionals for on the first time in a very long time are on the, you know, highly sought after list and um, are in the occupational categories that allow visa access that we haven't previously had. So that's only just changed as a COVID, post-COVID kind of um, scenario. So that has given us a freedom to recruit internationally that we haven't previously had um, as, easy, as easily. Uh, so we, you know, I know we are specifically looking at South Africa at the moment, but there's not an exclusion to any um, particular uh, international background. It's just really about your eligibility to be registered in Australia to undertake the allied health services that you would need to undertake. Awesome. Cheers. Getting a lot of awesome questions coming through, so keep firing them away. Sort of struggling to keep up with them, which is good. Um, but Louise, I might ask you if there's any sort of entry level roles for undergrads, uh, especially at APM. Absolutely. Um, this year alone, we've already hired um, two new grads into our New South Wales business, several new grads into our Victorian business. Um, so absolutely, we are um, very, very keen to have new grads. Sorry, just to clarify, did you mention undergrads? Taylor or new grads? Undergrads, so yeah, still at uni. Still studying for placement, is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, so absolutely, yes. We take on students for placement um, and, yeah, obviously our preference is final year students because that's where we can kind of um, have the most influence, I think, but absolutely we're open to undergrad students as well. Um, so I guess yes is the short answer, provided that we have... Um, the supervision within that same discipline in the region that's required for that placement. It would be the same. Cool. Got an absolute smashing question here from Hashan. Shout out Hashan. So on top, uh, actually, I might ask. I feel like Sierra wants to uh, answer this one. Uh, so on top of <laughs> on top of their degree, what are some of the things that young grads can do to separate themselves from other applicants and, and give them an advantage in being recruited by an organization? 
Um, I think I think if you're looking at setting people apart, um, it, it's a couple of times it's been mentioned about being confident and being being willing to have a go um, because because this industry is so big. And there is so much variety that you can get um, in one of these organisations. It's I and I'm sure Vita Health is very similar. You know, it's there is that much opportunity. There's so many disciplines that um, you work alongside, and you can soak up experience with that. I think um, if an applicant is really willing to just have a go and to to learn and jump in and um, yeah, being willing to learn on the fly because it's definitely not a a role where um, the learning is slow. It can be it can be quite fast paced, um, and you know if they're really resilient and really um, really personable as well, and if they're really coachable, it certainly goes a long way with setting setting people apart when you're looking at coming into occupational rehab or interviewing as well. Um, and having a real passion and an interest in in people, I guess, because that's who we work with, and in people's lives to make them better. Um, you know, if you don't really like working with people, um, it makes it really hard to do. Um, but we all wouldn't be here talking about um, health careers if people didn't enjoy working with people and health-related things um, anyway. So I, I definitely think, yeah, some of those things will definitely set people apart. Um, because there's a lot of learning on the job. Um, so, and there's a lot of resources and a, a lot of development that comes along the way. Um, and I think to being able to um, see where they can still use everything that they have worked so hard for in their degree, because it's all very applicable and very relevant to what we do in this industry. Um, and if you can really lean on that kind of stuff, um, it's can, yeah, certainly set yourself apart um, from other people. And I think just a couple, if I can add a couple of very practical things that set people apart mm. for me is um, if you ring me and you want to talk more about the job, learn more about it, and you show that kind of extra interest, and also practically if you come with some really great questions to the interview, like I love it when people ask me things like, um, you know, why have you stayed at Vital Health for so long? Or what's your culture like? And it really shows me that you're, you know, engaged in actually our organisation and what we kind of mean as well. So there's a couple of practical tips as well. Nice. Cheers, Jen. Um, and while we've got you on the comms, uh, we've got a Vital Health specific question. Um, so again, from anonymous attendee, shout out to you. Uh, what are the medical science roles offered at Vital Health and are there roles all over Australia? Yeah, so we are primarily based in Queensland and New South Wales and like rural um, aspects of those locations. Um, we have, so our allied health disciplines at the moment, we have physio, speech, OT, diet, exercise, um, psychology, mental health, OT, uh, allied health assistant, um, okay, speech, OT, physio. So then we also work very closely with um, GP practices as well. Um, so we don't technically employ medical students, but we have a close relationship with um, rural GPs. Nice. Sam, you, you froze on my screen. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, you are. You are. Awesome. We can hear your voice, which is good. Um, I've got a question for you. When should um, students start applying for graduate jobs? Uh, I think um, sort of we're coming up to the final quarter of this calendar year would be about the right timing. So, uh, we are just bringing to market a, a structured graduate program that will start next year. And um, we do employ graduates along the way. So if people are graduating in this middle semester, uh, they're welcome to apply to APM um, overall or Connect Work Care or APM Work Care specifically. 
but we our, our formalised graduate program will commence for 2022 and applications for the, that program will open towards the end of the year. But we do absolutely take graduates at any point in time during the year as that um, as their graduation comes to fruition. Nice. Is it the same at Vital Health, Jim? Yeah, that's the same. Um, although we might be slightly different. So we kind of have a, um, we definitely have most of our new grads come in at the start of the year. However, we just have a very, we already have a very dedicated um, new graduate support program, which we can set up for each new graduate who comes in at any time. Um, so we definitely take new grads on throughout the year um, at different stages and put them into the new grad program wherever their level is at. For example, if they've been working for three months already and then come to us, then they can slot into that three month program. Yeah, I should just probably add that the graduate program specifically for next year is actually designed to rotate people through the APM health portfolio businesses. So they'll work across different business lines for a period of time. So we're just finalising how long that time will be. So they might do nine months in a business, then nine months in another and um, get to pick where else they might like to trial. Uh, we also have international opportunities because APM is, has 10 countries uh, that we work in across the world. And um, at the moment, our opportunities with the New Zealand. Oh dear, we've lost you again. <laughs> um, our New Zealand counterpart uh, program as well. While well, we've got a travel bubble nationally in the future. Um, and yeah, and assuming you're not in Victoria just at the minute, but hopefully that doesn't last too long. Um, so the great, when I'm speaking about our graduate program, it's a all of APM approach to that. Um, but APM Work Care and Connect Work Care can take graduates on at any point in time, um, separate to that program and induct them and support them through their career journeys. Nice. Um, I might ask one more for Louise before I do a wee wrap up question for you all. Um, but how do you set up the mentoring process for new grads? Thanks, Taylor. I'm probably just reflecting um, part of the graduate program that Samantha mentioned, which commences next year, has a formalised kind of mentoring and buddy system within it. Um, however, obviously, as we've mentioned, um, at the current point in time when we're hiring new grads, it's usually the, you know, um, team leader supervisor in that team who is going, putting them through that kind of three to six month induction period, which is quite structured, um, includes obviously lots of shadowing, lots of opportunity for professional development and lots of mentoring within that, not just with the, um, the team, but also amongst other teams, depending on the region. Um, so I guess, yeah, informally, lots and lots of shadowing, pretty tailored in that um, obviously each individual comes to us with different skills. So some people might need lots more shadowing in a certain area. Others might be um, much more proficient and able to jump in and just have some, I guess, lighter supervision. So we just try and tailor it as much as possible to the individual and what they what they bring skill-wise to the role. Um, and then obviously overlay it with that more structured induction program to make sure that they're hitting those skills and competencies um, throughout their induction as needed. And obviously there's checkpoints within that to make sure that um, they've got all the required competencies and can kind of move on to the next stage of being proficient in the role. Lovely. Sounds like a nice setup you've got there in terms of mentoring. Right, I might, uh, just in the interest of time, I just want to quickly, um, I'll, go, I'll start with you, Jean. In one sentence, why should students apply with your organisation? Um, I think we've, yeah, we've got a great new grad mentoring program, great internal supports, um, access to external professional development. It's a unique experience and something different to put on your CV. You get a, a broad range of clients. Nice. Nice, nice big sentence. Um, Sarah or Sam? Who wants to go for Connect and one sentence why a student should apply for your organisation? Oh, both frozen. I think Sarah, maybe Sarah's frozen now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm right, I'm 
Look, we're both there. Uh, I guess the the reason that you would come to Connect Work Care is to be part of a multidisciplinary team that spends every day helping people to live and work well. Awesome. Cool. And Louise? Um, I think the reason that you would come to the APM business overall is because of the diversity that we offer. Um, we've got great scale as a very large business internationally, but the beauty is that we operate lots of smaller businesses within that umbrella, which means you get the best of both, you know, the intimacy of working for a smaller business, but also being part of a, a global um, larger scale business, which is fantastic. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Sam, Louise, Sierra, and Jen, massive shout out to all of you for being on the panel. Had a lot of fun, don't know about you, but uh, there was a bunch of questions I think to to um, ask, so hold on to those. And um, if you want to backtrack from here, the way you came in and start engaging with some of the exhibitors, I hope you all have an awesome time. And again, thank you everyone for being involved and I hope you have an awesome day. Thanks. Thanks for your time, everybody. Cheers, guys. Bye.